Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, welcome. My name is Zach, I'm a makeup artist and medical esthetician based in Toronto, Canada. And here on YouTube, I like to make beauty as simple and as everyday friendly as I can. Today, I'm gonna be doing more of like a kind of everyday look, playing with some new products I got for my birthday. This past weekend, I turned 32, and then the following day, January 17th, my YouTube channel hit its one year anniversary. Back in 2021, I turned 31, and I was thinking, wow, if I don't start my YouTube channel now when I have the time, it's never going to happen. So I did. It was very, very interesting, very overwhelming in a sense getting it started because I wanted everything to be perfect. But then I learned perfectionism isn't possible. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn. So here we are a year later, way more comfortable and confident feeling in front of the camera. And I've grown this amazing community and all of you are just so wonderful with all of your sweet comments. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. It's later in the day that I'm filming this and I've already done my kind of skincare and stuff and I wanted to kind of use the base I use on an everyday basis. So today I am revisiting the Dr. Sam's Flawless Gossamer Tint in Tint 01. This is one I mentioned in my previous video where I showed my vacation makeup. I ordered this when I was in the U.S. and I took it with me when I went down to Miami and when I was in Miami it felt very thick and very heavy on the skin. But here in Toronto, we just got one of the biggest snows. I think it's the largest snow Toronto has had since 2008. Could be mistaken on that. But we had a very big snow, very cold, very kind of drying environment. And this feels wonderful on my skin in this climate compared to the Miami where it felt thick and heavy. One thing I struggled with today with this is when I went to go pump it out, it's almost like it had picked up a lot of air and it took me forever to be able to pump everything out. So eventually I got enough. I have about two and a half layers all over my face. And then around my eye area, I used my Super Goop Bright Eyed, which is another tinted mineral SPF. And I almost use this around my eyes. It's like a concealer and a little something to even off the discoloration I have on my eyelids. So that is my base. Now it's been a few hours. The sun's gone down. I have got creasing on my eyelids. So I'm just take a damp beauty sponge. This is a beauty sponge from Real Techniques and a holiday set they had. And compared to the orange ones, this purple that came in that holiday kit is very soft. This is one of the softest sponges I've tried in a very long time. And it was a great value for how many sponges you got. Since I've already got a little bit of base on, I am going to start by using my makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Full Coverage Concealer and Contour in the shade C4. This has more of a medium coverage to it, so I want to use it just to add a little bit of coverage to my areas of concern. Since this is very much an everyday style of makeup, I don't want a ton of coverage. So I'm going to start with a few dots. I'm going to take my It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe number 7. This is, I think they call it the Complexion Perfection Brush. I'm just going to use this to blend out. I want to add a little bit more to the fronts of my cheeks because I am going to be using a cream blush and I don't want anything to look kind of too ruddy because my skin is quite ruddy naturally. Although over the past year, I found just from using topical retinoids consistently using my as like acid, the redness has started to tone down and a tinted sunscreen does a lot of the heavy lifting for me with as far as tone correction. So a little bit of concealer is all I really need for my all over base. I'm going to go back with my beauty sponge, which is slightly dampened and I'm just going to press that in. Being able to use a tinted sunscreen and just spot correcting with concealer is something I have just recently became more comfortable doing for years. The tinted sunscreen, that level of coverage I had when I started the video, it wouldn't be enough for my personal taste and over this last year. So you're seeing myself on camera every day, looking at myself with different styles of makeup. I found out that, you know, maybe my skin isn't as bad as I thought it was up here. <laughs> I'm a real boy with real skin and I have large pores and you know, no amount of makeup is going to hide that without looking like it's 
four inches thick on my face. So I don't want that. I'm embracing my skin for what it is and a little bit of tone correction is what I'm happy with right now. I've had this tinted sunscreen on for several hours. I have a tiny bit of stickiness or tackiness to the skin. So I wanna add a little bit of powder. This is kind of like a powder foundation. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Perfecting Powder. And I have the shade L1 Porcelain. And I'm gonna be using the Real Techniques number 227. This is the Light Layer Powder Brush. This is an interesting powder. I've heard mixed reviews whether is it a powder foundation, is it not? From what I've seen, what I gathered, and what I know about makeup in general, a powder or any product can be whatever you want. If you want to use your liquid foundation as a concealer, you can do it. Just bend the rules and make the products work to how you want. And since I want less coverage, using a fluffy brush like this will help me get a little bit less coverage and help set everything down. Today, I'm going to mix up my order of operations a little bit because I normally like to apply highlight bronzer then blush but today I want to do bronzer then highlight because the bronzer I'm using is this Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer in the shade number one fair. I want to use this bronzer because it's a little bit more yellow, a little bit more warm. I feel like the highlight as well as the blusher I want to use will kind of offset it and they'll just play really well together. So same powder brush and I'm going to take this on the perimeter of my face. This is a fascinating formula. In all honesty, I am not sure why I picked it up because a lot of the marketing was it's the same formula as the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Pressed Powder. And I'm not a huge fan of that powder. I have purchased two compacts over my lifetime and I have one of them now still. The last one I purchased is in my little makeup drawer because I panned it. I just use it as a mirror. And even though I finished now two of these powders, it's just a powder, you know, for me, I don't really get the hype of. I don't understand why it's so loved or maybe I'm just not doing something right. But that's how makeup is. Makeup isn't one size fits all just because everyone else loves a product doesn't mean you'll love it. Doesn't mean you have to love it. That being said, I do like the bronzer better than the powder. My complaint with the powder is if I want to use this every day, I wish it was a little bit more neutral to slightly rosy because with this yellow undertone I have to be careful with it and use a fluffy brush like this or else I can get kind of sickly looking which is not fun. So very very subtle. Does it do a lot? No. Am I okay with it? Yeah. I want to add a little bit of highlight to the skin and this is a product I've wanted to try for a while. I just couldn't get my hands on it because anytime I checked the Laura Geller website it was sold out. This is the Laura Geller Baked Gelato Swirl Highlighter in the shade charming paint. Many years ago, we're looking back to almost like 2014 to 2016, this highlight in the shade Gilded Honey, I think is what it was called, was very, very popular. I don't do well with cold highlights, so I never purchased it, but I saw this one on their website and I wanted to try it, but it was sold out. So I found this in the U.S. through Laura Geller's Amazon store. So I'm going to apply this with my Real Techniques setting brush and I'm just going to apply it to the top of my cheeks. That's very, very pretty. I really enjoy this. When I got back to Canada and I was doing my linking for my website, I noticed this formula was no longer on Laura Geller's website. So I hope it's not discontinued because so far I'm really loving this. I'm going to take a little bit just over the arch of my brow to help kind of lift it a little bit. That's very pretty. I enjoy this. The shade reminds me a lot of something like the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlight in the shade Blossom Glow, which is a really beautiful, affordable product in Wet n Wild. So I believe it's under $10 here in Canada. Really, really nice. The shade is a little bit warmer than the Laura Geller, but not much. If you're cool, neutral, or warm undertone, you'll still get more of that kind of icy pinky effect. So really, really enjoy this. Now I wasn't thinking when I did this because I am going to be using a cream blush as my base and that is one of the products one of my girlfriends gave me for my birthday and this is from Chanel. This is from the number one Chanel collection and this is called the Red Camellia Revitalizing Lip and Cheek Balm. This is the shade number two healthy pink. Nice kind of neutral warm pink. Very similar to the shade pink soap from Lisa Aldridge. 
So since I already have powder down, I'm just take a tiny bit on my finger and I'm going to lightly kind of stipple over. I know a lot of people like to apply cream over their powder products. For me, it was something we were instructed not to do in makeup school and it's kind of stuck with me. However, you can do it. Formulas have advanced so much over the years that makes this a little bit of an easier technique to do. Just to be on the safe side, I like to kind of pat versus kind of swiping. Take my sponge, press over that, just to help everything kind of meld into the skin. Very pretty, very nice kind of flush of color to the cheeks. Now having it on the skin compared to the Lisa Eldridge, this formula I found a little bit easier to spread out. It has a little bit more of a translucency in the base color, which means it's a little bit easier to work with. Just for comparison, let me show you a quick swatch. So Lisa Eldridge and Pink Soap, there it is. It almost looks like a drier cream when you first dispense it, but as you blend it out, it kind of melts. And then next to it, I'll do the Chanel. So they're very, very similar colors. So we have the Lisa Eldridge and Pink Soap, Chanel number one, the Chanel. This is the shade number two, Healthy Pink. So. Very similar, warm, slightly apricot pink shades, except the Lisa Eldridge has a more dense base color versus the Chanel. And the Chanel is a little bit easier to get your hands on than the Lisa Eldridge, at least it is here in Canada. Now I wanna apply another blush on top of this blush because I wanna add a little bit of warmth to the look. And that is going to be another product I got for my birthday for my friends. They got me the other limited edition blush from Chanel Spring Collection. This is a luminizing, what is this called? This is a blush lumiere in the shade Peche Rosé. And it's a nice kind of warm tangerine. First impressions, the shade did intimidate me a little bit because I normally don't do well with really warm kind of rusty tones. However, using this over a pinky blush, I'm applied with a powder brush. So it's a little bit more subtle in the application. I feel like it will make this shade quite workable. If you are are someone who saw my video about the color family and how to choose your personal color. If you're someone who kind of identified with autumn color scale, this would be like a perfect autumn kind of blush tone. It's got a nice warmth to it, but it's quite muted. Very, very pretty. It's applying very easily. Let's look a little bit closer in my mirror. It's almost smoothing compared to when I just had the cream blush on. I feel like this is almost making my skin look a little bit smoother where I'm applying this. Has a nice luminosity without being too luminous. So if you're someone who struggles with fine lines, wrinkles, or enlarged pores, or kind of uneven skin texture, you might like this because it's not a sheen or a finish that's going to really emphasize anything on the skin that we might not want to draw attention to. Very, very pretty. As far as these kind of rusty orange shades go, I feel like it's quite unique because a lot of times in my experience with some of these more orangey blush colors that they bring out to market, they tend to have a little bit more of a stronger, more opaque base, which makes them a little bit harder to share where this product, even though it looks quite intense in the pan, applied especially when paired with a large brush like this, it just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna kind of leave my complexion where it is for now. We're gonna move on. Add a little bit of something to the eyes. When I was in the US, I was walking through Ulta and I saw this Bare Minerals Mineral eyeshadow palette in the shade Ultra Natural. I like this rather neutral color story because even though it's neutral, it has a muted quality to it, which really applies to me and the colors I like and I feel like suit my complexion. I wanted to try this out and I haven't tried Bare Minerals eyeshadows in years. So I'm going to use my e.l.f. fluffy eyeshadow blending brush and I'm going to go into the lash so I'm gonna go into the last shade on the top row. This is called Accrue number one. I'm gonna take this on the side of my brush and I'm gonna use this as a base color. So I'm applying my third layer of the Accrue One shade from the Bare Minerals palette. And it's a nice color. It's very, very sheer. It's very smooth. Continue with my e.l.f. blending brush. I'm gonna go into the middle shade on the bottom row called Dawn number five. I'm gonna add a little bit of structure and shape to my crease. 
I'm applying the second layer of that mid-tone color to my socket. Combination of two things. These powders are quite sheer. They have a very translucent base to them. I'm also using a very fluffy brush and fluffy brushes by nature deposit less product. So far, I feel like if you have a skin tone much darker than mine, this might not show up really well. There are six different color variations in these little Bare Minerals palettes. If they all have a similar pigmentation to this, I don't know if they're going to work very very well for a bunch of different skin tones. If you like something very sheer, I think you'll really enjoy this. It's nice. I'm glad I have it. It's going to be an easy one for me to use every day. Now, I want to kind of play with the warmth on the cheek a little bit. When I was in the U.S., I was looking around trying to figure out if I wanted anything from Sephora, and I found something that caught my eye that had been on my wish list for quite a while. It is this Viseart Bridal Satin Palette. I had wanted this palette, but they're Viseart palettes. Viseart is a more of a luxury artistry brand and these palettes are not cheap. However, this was marked down right before New Year's and I believe they had 20% in addition to their clearance products. So this is on clearance. I got an additional 20% off. So I believe it was around half price. So around $40 USD. Really great. I'm going to take the side of my e.l.f. brush and I'm going to go into this orangey shade. I'm going to use the belly of the brush to wash this over my eyelid. Here in the inner corner, I'm going to pull the shade up a little bit to meet the kind of start of my brow because that will help lift the entire front portion of my eye. This is a very workable orange shade. If you're someone like me who doesn't normally go for a lot of oranges and warmer tones in general, you might really, really like this. I'm going to add a little bit more to this side. And I'm going to go into this pinky shade. And I want to take this on the inner corner of my eye. I am going to try out this Well People. This is the Bio Base Baked Brightener in the shade number one, Universal Glow. When I was walking through Target, I noticed they had like a little like clean beauty, like little section almost. And this was one of the products in here. And when I got home and I was doing my linking for my library on my website, I noticed the name of this product has been changed. So you will see in the description box down below, it will have the new name formerly known as Bio Brightening Powder. So I'm going to use this in that setting brush. Swirling the brush into this, it's quite powdery, so be wary if you're wearing a dark color. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it right under my eyes to help brighten up, remove any shadow that might have fallen down, and I'm going to clean up just on the edge of the shadow. Powders like these that have a little bit of a light reflection to them, but they don't have an obvious kind of glitter or shimmer to them, they can be great for lifting areas that are a little bit more sunken. So for me, I like to take a little bit right in the kind of smile line, add a little bit of light reflection so I'll just help kind of pump them out a little bit. And also right here, kind of where the bridge of my nose meets my brow bone, just kind of flatten it out a little bit. Very nice. This is very similar to a powder I use very, very often in my everyday life. This is a product that lives in my washroom. So when I'm getting ready to go out, I can use it over top of a sunscreen that's too shiny. This is from Bare Minerals. This is called the Translucent Powder Duo. So you have one side that's matte, one side that has a glow to it. The glow side gets hard pan like crazy. Crazy. So with this product, I feel like every one week or two, I need to kind of buff it with a tissue to get the hard pan off. That does it. This product has been discontinued. I have been through five or six of these over the years. I absolutely love it. It's such a flattering powder, but since you can't get this, the Well People Brightening Powder might be a great alternative. Off camera, I'm going to do lashes and I'll be right back. I used my Thrive Cosmetics Mascara again. I've been using this for about a week straight now and very, very fascinating. Once it goes on and dries, I don't notice it really moves, flakes, smudges, transfer. However, it's a very, very wet formula. And when it first applied, if I'm not careful and I don't really take the time to curl my lashes, it can transfer to my lower lashes and get under my eyes. After it dries, no issue. Now with curling my lashes, this is a very wet formula. It's a little heavy. So I find that it can weigh down the curl a little bit, which I've had straight eyelashes all of my life. It doesn't really bother me. For brows, I'm going to keep it very simple. Mentioned my last video, I've had my microblading done while I was on vacation. I'm just going to use my e.l.f. Wow Brow. I want to do lips in a two-step approach. I am going to start off by using one of the long-lasting juicy tints from Ramond, and this is in the shade number 25 Bare Grape. 
So once it's on and you kind of tap it out and kind of create it into a stain, it is like a my lips but better slightly softened, slightly cooled down type of tone, which will help kind of balance the look and add that kind of coolness that is more naturally found in my skin compared to warm. But I want to keep things feeling a little bit more warm. So I'm going to use one of, I believe they are the Drawing Atelier lipsticks from the brand I'm Mean. And the shade is number seven, Cozy. And I'm apply this to the inner portion of my lip. So you can see before I kind of blend them out, it is a lot more warmth compared to the Bare Grape. If you're doing something like this, you feel like you have a little too much warmth, you can go back in, take the very point of your applicator, and you can do that just to add a little bit more coolness to it to help ground it. Not much comes off. That's something I'm really loving about these K-Beauty formulas. For lips, they're very thin. They're very lightweight. They kind of go on. They dry down. They lock. But they never feel heavy or dry. So really, really love that. And I'm someone who likes a little bit of shine to the lips. So I'm going to use my NYX hashtag this is everything lip oil in the shade is sheer sky blue. And I'm going to focus this more so on the inner portion of my lips. Alrighty, so this is going to be my final look. Very simple, very easy. It's almost like a no makeup makeup-esque vibe. And add a little bit of something more because we added a lot to it. We played with some things. We got made things a little bit more punchy and contrasting than what I would typically use for like a no makeup makeup. But this is just kind of a fun way. I like to play with makeup. I like to mix my undertones. I like to kind of just be my own artist and mix things to create something fun. And that way I'm allowing myself to use up more of the products in my collection. If you found this video enjoyable, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you all again from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me over this past year and just making it so wonderful. I am excited for this year and all the years to come in the future. I will see you all then. Take care wherever it is you are in the world. Bye y'all.